menjemput dan mempersilakan yang berbahagia Datuk Datuk Asma binti Ismail Naib Chancellor University Science Malaysia untuk menyampaikan perutusan tahunan Naib Chancellor 2018 yang bertajuk Making USM a Preferred University by Design. Silakan Datuk. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera, salam satu Malaysia, salam satu University Sains Malaysia. Terima kasih kepada pengacara majlis. Yang berbahagia, Tan Sri Datuk Mustafa Mansor, Pro Chancellor University Sains Malaysia. Yang berbahagia, Tan Sri Datuk Dr. J. Katesan Manika Vasagam, Pro Chancellor University Sains Malaysia. Yang berbahagia, Tan Sri Datuk Dr. Zulkifli A. Hassan, Pengurusi Lembaga Governor University Sains Malaysia. Yang berbahagia, Profesor Datuk Dr. Ahmad Zakaria, suami tercinta dan dikasihi. Yang berbahagia, ahli-ahli Lembaga Governor University Sains Malaysia. Semua timbalan-timbalan Nap Chancellor University Sains Malaysia yang saya kasihi. Pegawai-pegawai utama universiti, tetamu-tetamu kenamaan universiti, all captains of the industries, thank you for being here. Semua warga USM yang saya kasihi, wakil-wakil media, tuan-tuan dan puan-puan sekalian. Before I proceed, I would like to say this. It takes a large number of people to actually make today a success. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big hand to all the unsung heroes who have spent so much time to make today a success. What I'm going to be talking today is the second of my annual address. The first one was last year in 2017. This is now 2018, and I'm going to be talking about making USM a preferred university by design, ataupun merekayasa USM sebagai universiti pilihan. I'll be covering on disruptive changes and their impact on higher education. What are we going to do about it? We hear it all the time, but what are we going to do about it? And making USM the preferred university by design. Alhamdulillah syukur genap sekarang ni satu tahun empat bulan dua puluh satu hari beberapa minit dan second. Saya sekarang ni menjadi Vice Chancellor at University Science Malaysia. Saya sentiasa hashtag syukur selalu di atas semua kurniaan Tuhan dan tunjuk ajarnya kepada saya dan pengurusan tertinggi USM untuk membawa universiti tercinta ini ke mercu kejayaan. Banyak pencapaian, banyak anugerah serta pengiktirafan yang telah universiti ini perolehi pada tahun 2017. Semua warga universiti daripada staf, daripada kaki tangan akademik, pengurusan dan pentadbiran telah menjulang nama universiti di peringkat kebangsaan mahupun ke pesada dunia. What I want to say to you is that at the end of the day, USM headline KPIs in 2016 kita ada sedikit merah 23.1%. The aim of the game is to no longer have red for this university. And in 2017, alhamdulillah kita telah mendapat 64.3% hijau, 35.7% kuning dan tiada merah default. Tahniah kepada semua. I want to say here for 2017, thank you to the chancellors, pro chancellor, deputy vice chancellors, HODs, heads of departments, deans, pengarah, all kaki tangan akademik, staff and donors for making this university a great university. 
Thank you to all the students, student leaders, and to all the students of USM for also carrying the flag. Thank you for the semua warga USM. Thank you everyone for a great 2017. Okay, let's begin the serious discussion on disruptive changes and their impact on higher education. Let me begin by saying that nothing is more solid than the traditional brick and mortar university and we think that the university as we understand it today will still be here tomorrow. And if you say yes and you believe that the university should not change, then there is no need to change. We just concentrate on being a university that offers quality education because we believe that when we are good, people will come to us. And because we think we are good, and because we are in charge, we say to the students, work for higher education and earn your degree. Because we are in charge again, we make courses available, we design what we think is the best fit curriculum, we state what is our criteria for accessibility to the degree program and we tell you how long it will take to earn your degree and we tell you to be here, not from your house, not in your office, but you have got to be here in this university for four years and you've got to work hard for your degree. And when you finish your study after four years, and you finish your requirements for graduation, we create a great day called Convocation and we give you your degree. We hope that you have learned something useful while you're here in USM and you can use that knowledge for the next journey in life. This concept, ladies and gentlemen, is known as learn to earn. You learn first, work hard, get your degree, and then you earn. We say this because we think that the degree is our trump card. Nobody else can give this degree. Only the university can give this degree. So the degree is our trump card. Or is it? Because the world is changing and we need to keep pace with the challenges of the 21st century. We have the accelerating pace of change due to the digital age, the disruptive technologies brought by Industry 4.0, global economic crisis and global competition due to globalization. All these have created disruptive change in higher education. The convergence of artificial intelligence and hyperconnectivity or internet has not only enhanced productivity but also creating a disruptive change in our lives. We no longer use taxis, we use grab car. That is an example of disruptive change, whether we like it or not. The era of advances in technology due to Industry 4.0 like data analytics, 3D printing, machine learning, IoT, robotics, automation, all that is now here to stay. And because of that, we can no longer do things in silo. We need to move now to transdisciplinary or multidisciplinary. And in combination with digital era, ideas can now cross border easily and therefore collaboration and information sharing now becomes very important. Tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, is about collaborative economy. Therefore, in order to have collaboration, we need, to, we need collaboration because we need to co-learn and then we can co-create. So, it is no longer now about being in control, about being in charge and be secretive about information. Now it's about collaborative networking, it's about sharing of information. 
And collaborative economy, basically, is based on trust and trustworthiness. Do you have the character that people can trust? If they look at your face, mono a mono, when we are talking, do we inculcate trust with the other person? Because without trust, there will be no sharing of information, nor any best practices would become out of it. So therefore, education now needs to inculcate values, integrity, teamwork. These now play a very important role in the way we educate the future generation of Malaysia. Of course, the question will now be, what is the impact of this disruptive change to higher education? Let me tell you one thing. Higher education is getting to be expensive. Student debts are rising due to the loan taken to pay for tuition fees, PTPTN, all that is a loan. It's no longer biasiswa, right? And admissions, and if you think that, you know, private university is expensive, and you say admission to public university is cheaper, more affordable, okay, but for undergraduate, not for postgrad, all right? But then again, they have another problem. Admissions to public university, the 20 public universities, admission is limited. The number of seats available is limited. And most subject matters, all right, learn, are probably not practical nor adaptable to a changing world, especially when 65% of jobs tomorrow are not here today. So the status quo, ladies and gentlemen, about higher education and being a higher education provider needs to change. So higher education can no longer remain status quo. We need to change. And now we want to discuss about that trump card called the degree. Of course, now we have to ask the question, what is the value of the degree? With the advent of globalization and global economic crisis, employers now want industry-ready graduates. And today, industries hire graduates with competency and skills rather than graduates with a degree, even if that graduate comes from Harvard. They datanglah daripada Harvard pun, kalau dia tidak ada kompetensi, dia tidak ada skill, nobody will hire that graduate. And the trend now is also changing. Instead of getting, okay, where's your degree, now employers are saying, what can you do? Can you do this? Can you do it brilliantly? Because now employers are accepting non-degree credentials. Right? and provide certificates. As long as you provide certificate from Western Digital, ka, from Novartis, ka, from Maybank, ka, they have trained you. So now employers are hiring this kind of graduates. Then we have this disruptive change called gig economy. Gig economy means there's a lot of us now who have the skill, but we can now offer to do the job without contract. And we can offer to do the job for less. Jadi employer mana tak nak you? So bagi mereka yang bersara pilihan, this is something that you can now do. The skill that you have can now be offered. So employers now will obtain a cheaper but more effective workforce to perform the task required based on their competency and skill. All right? So now we find that there is now a new change in town. Competency and skills now matters. So the degree, as we know it, is slowly but surely beginning to lose its value. So again, I put to you, higher education needs to undergo change. Then again, the students are also changing. Before, during my younger days, we say, whatever, and the students now say, gapa ever. And I say, send separate messages to me. And the students say, yes, PM to P. So even the students and the kind of language they're using is changing. And we from the old school probably needs to catch up. Because the students nowadays are always connected. You know, they go everywhere with this handphone of theirs, right? Easier and faster, basically, to get information via internet 
than reading a book. And we have many professors say, if you don't know how to read a book, you cannot graduate. You have to feel that paper. Yes, the students are reading the book, but the book is digital. They no longer touch paper. And if they go digital, knowledge is now available upon demand. As I'm talking, gig economy, apa ke benda gig economy, there, you can now Google, and you can find out G-I-G, what the is G-I-G, and it will tell you immediately what G-I-G is. So this is definitely now different from the yesteryears of students who passively sit down, listen to your lecture, and think that you're God. All right? And these kind of students never question you. They take down everything you say as if these are pearls uh, of wisdom, and they read from printed textbooks and they write little essays. Now they copy off from the internet. So the new students now require a new learning paradigm and a new learning experience and new learning space. Mungkin bukan dalam konsep begini sekarang seperti classroom. All this while at USM and all the, the public universities, we always concentrate on student kemasukan, admission, based on UPU. And we forgot that there's a large number of students out there, and these are called the non-traditionals. They are members of the workforce. They are lifelong learners. We forgot about them. We concentrate only on students that come in melalui UPU. So there are many more potential students that are already working, and they too, even though they are working in the workforce, they too need accessibility to higher education in order to learn, to upgrade their knowledge and skill sets with or without a degree. These are called non-traditional students. They are members of the workforce, either government or industry, and they are lifelong learners. Because right now, these non-traditional students, they have varying levels of education and experience. They cannot afford four years to complete their university degree because they have to juggle family and other responsibilities while they are completing their studies. And they need to work part-time or full-time. So what you gonna do about these students? Because to them, degrees should be about how much the students learn rather than how many hours they spend in the classroom. For these students, it's different. It's not about earning the degree now. For these students, competency-based education becomes very attractive compared to the traditional model. And in the United States, we find that the non-traditional students stand at 75% and only 25% are actually in the university. So, ladies and gentlemen, as we move into the era of income generation, non-traditional students now become a new marketplace for higher education. The disruptive change also now has brought about the fact that knowledge is ubiquitous, it's everywhere. With the digital age, knowledge is no longer confined to the classroom and the lecture halls. Knowledge is available faster and upon demand and available at the fingertips. MOOCs, kita dah ada MOOCs sekarang ni that have enhanced accessibility to higher education and concepts like edX for Harvard have got many courses taught by Harvard professors that is now made available, sometimes even free. And students now Google instead of going to the library. So the librarians also need to figure out how to attract the students to stay in the library because most of them are getting all the information via Google. And they can get access to all the lectures taught by the best in the world without having to leave home. And one good thing about this is that women who are not allowed to go to universities can now get to learn via the internet. So with all this, why bother to study in the university when you can study from home we can study from your workplace why bother to come to the university the global economic crisis has great created the biggest tsunami impact to the universities operational budgets to support the university now start to decrease it is no longer going to come back to what it was before Public universities in Malaysia overnight needs to now find means and measures to stay alive. 
and with the rising salary of staff, emolument actually makes up the biggest chunk of the operational at the university. So now, Vice Chancellors of Public University needs to be having entrepreneurial mindset. No longer just about academic. They can balance, they can hebat dua dua. Academic pun hebat, dan menjadi entrepreneur pun hebat. Public universities now need to be entrepreneurial and generate surplus. Bukan profit. We are not a private higher education. We are public higher education. We generate enough money to create a surplus that can now make our university advance to the next level. Then again, lecturers are also changing. We have in this university a mixture of the young ones, the middle one, and then there is the mature ones. Right? Today, ladies and gentlemen, Professor Google now takes over and professors in the university are no longer the fountains of knowledge. Because it's faster to get Professor Google to answer than Professor Asma to answer. Okay? Lecturers can be anywhere with video conferencing or online. So now we are evolving from being the guru or expert towards now being a guide to allow the students to discover learning and critical thinking. Dulu, we teach. We don't know whether they learn or not. We teach. Now, we have to now encourage them to learn. You see the difference? You no longer teach. You guide them to learn. All right? So, lecturers or educators also now need to be retrained and accredited with the new delivery of learning and teaching. Then there is the problem of competition. Globalization has also increased competition among the universities. The new emerging change that we see now is to convert to 30% teaching, 70% online. And once we convert to 70% online, Suddenly, it makes the university more attractive and more competitive. And suddenly, the students are no longer these UPU students that we have to take care of or the postgraduate students that is now inside this university, but now the students is all over the world. Okay? So, to survive, universities of today basically have to increase quality, they have to increase student numbers, but they have to lower the cost. So how are we going to do this? That is my next question. What you gonna do about it? The end game for all Malaysian higher education is three. Three R, respected, referred, relevant. Used to be, these are the three R for USM. But now, three R is part of the blueprint. And now all universities have to undergo 3R. So 3R is no longer exclusive to University Science Malaysia. Semua universities sekarang ni, public or private, has to be undergoing 3R. And if that's the case, why come to USM? You have to ask that question. Why come to USM? Because everybody else is also doing 3R. So, the big question still haunts us. What are we going to do about it? We can be averse, fear of change. Ramai dalam bilik ini, mungkin fear of change. We are familiar and comfortable with what we know. So, we say, maintain status quo. Apa nak tukar-tukar sangat? Maintain status quo. Or we can be complacent, unaffected, don't know, don't care. Janji ada nasi blau, ada nasi lemak, ada roti canan tiap hari, who cares? Apa dia nak buat change, ikut dia lah. Or we can do strategic adoption, hashtag change, but do it USM style. Okay? So, we know that we need to undergo change. I mean, any rational thinking person in the room knows you have to undergo change. But change towards what? 
This is the question that we want to ask. Because with global competition and impact of disruptive change, relevance is not everything. Ah, sudah. Relevance is not everything. Last year, she tells me, 3R referred apa ni, uh, uh, relevant and re, uh, apa ni? Apa yang kata tadi dah? Lupa lah. <laughs> Respected. Ha, engkau. Uh, relevant. Now, what is she telling me now pula lah? Distinctiveness matters. What is so unique about you? That's going to make people want to come to USM. It's not about being relevant. Semua orang pun dah mula change their courses to be relevant. I told you 3R is no longer exclusive only to University Science Malaysia. So now we have to ask the question, what is so unique about USM? This when we start to talk and ask this question, what is so unique about USM? This is no longer about ranking. Jadi semua profesor dalam bilik ni yang terlalu uh, allergic to ranking, don't worry. We are not talking about ranking. Being high in the ranking cannot stop this re this re disruptive change in higher education. We need to be prepared today with strategic differentiation. All right, because it is understood that it's hard to please all the stakeholders all of the time. But it's very important to ask the question: Are you the preferred university each time? The question then is: USM the preferred one? Okay, let's look at our apex. Ramai lupa the what the is apex. Apex? Apa tu apex? Okay. Let me remind everybody about Apex. Okay, we got the status of Apex in 2008. Hafal benda ni sebab from now on Dr. Musa semua kenaikan pangkat. Saya minta untuk tanya soalan ni kepada calon-calon yang ingin kenaikan pangkat. Sebab kalau dia tak tahu pasal universiti dia sendiri, macam mana dia dapat kenaikan pangkat dalam universiti ini? Alright. After this I know my slides will now go viral. Okay, sebab nak hafal slide ni. Okay. Um, Apex, ladies and gentlemen, we got Apex in 2008. Bukan 2009, bukan 2010. Hello, 2008. Hapal. Okay. The vision of Apex is to transform higher education for a sustainable tomorrow. USM, our mission is to be a pioneering transdisciplinary research intensive that empowers the bottom billion and transform their economic well-being. But You lupa one thing. Tiap-tiap kali kita tengok video transformation, kita nampak yang ni transform bottom billion, bottom billion. Kalau tanya driver saya pun dia kata apa benda ni? Bottom billion, punggung beribu ya. Yeah. So, that that he can tell me. Alright? But bottom line, he forgot also and everybody also so forgot about the values of Apex. You forgot this part. The values of Apex, daripada dulu lagi kita kata dah this university must provide quality, must provide equity, availability, accessibility, affordability and whatever we do gotta be appropriate to the culture of the people that we use as the target audience or the target client. Kita dah janji benda ni. Right? Tapi kita lupa. And the trust of this university tak payah saya tanya. This university stress on knowledge. This university kata daripada dulu lagi USM must be future oriented. This university dari dulu lagi kata USM must be unique. Alright? And must be sustainable, must be ada humanity, universality. This university must change. It's there in our constitution. This university must sacrifice and this university must tunjuk wellness. Sebab tu USM fit tu tadi. What am I doing? I'm just asking you to remember what this university is. Because many of you have forgotten. And this university daripada dulu lagi dah kata, any solution to R&D must go from brains to business to humanity. 
Sebab kita pun ikut agenda research university From brains, idea kita to business Sebab kita mesti undergo wealth creation But at the end of the day We must use the innovation That we have developed For the good of humanity Itu janji-janji kita So under the Apex program We were the chosen one We were in line with the SDG Daripada zaman jahiliah lagi Since we address inclusiveness The bottom billion tu tadi And our values were always produced Balanced graduate Kalau USM remember this Dah lama USM is the one Bila as soon as blueprint tu keluar USM should be the champion Sebab kita dah buat lama lagi Sebelum university pun, uh, Sebelum ministry produce The higher education blueprint Since 2008, we were the preferred university by Mohe. Tan Sri Zul was the KSU. Enam, lapan universiti, semuanya challenge to get APEC status. We have a committee at Mohe that datang evaluate every university. Masing-masing semua cerita dia ni, dia hebat ranking lah, gerebak-gerebuk pun dah. But we are different. We say this university has values, this university has trust. This university is here to help humanity. This university follows inclusive development. This university dari dulu lagi believe in the sustainable development goals. And for that, the panel said, this university is different. And that's why this university is unique enough to be given the APEC status. And today, we are the preferred university. So the question sekarang ni Dengan industri 4.0 Dengan indah, dengan all these things Is APEC still relevant? Ni ni menolong pada humanity ni Rasa macam so soft you know Whether we should be now you know Go hardball on IOT On artificial intelligence On disruptive uh, machine learning Deep learning Maybe we should go to that So I ask MPRC To go around the campus And ask Three simple question. What is Apex University? Sebab kalau tanya budak-budak ni, dia pun kata, why you come here? Oh, because USM is the Apex University. What the is Apex University? Siapa pun tak boleh jawab. Okay. So, and when did we get Apex status? Ramai tak boleh jawab. Okay. And do you think we have achieved Apex? Many have no idea. Do you know why? Do you know why most of you have no idea about Apex? Because we had grand ideas but we did not follow up with action plan. Without action plan, ladies and gentlemen, we will not unlock policies that will facilitate the Apex agenda and because we don't have this policy, we also do not monitor any outcomes of the Apex agenda. Sebab itulah ramai tak tahu tentang what the is Apex. And as a result of that, many batches of students have graduated since 2008 but no one us no monitor if they had Apex values in their DNA. No one asked because there was no monitoring. So the question now is that is Apex still relevant? So in the days, ladies and gentlemen, of disruptive change, with the advent of Industry 4.0, the last bastion between human and machines is about putting people in the center. It's about values and the end game is about humanity. So, ladies and gentlemen, yes, Apex is very much relevant. So, the big questions now for the university, for USM to be the preferred university, what is our strategic differentiation? What is so unique about USM that we will attract majority of or a chosen target group of students? Can we be the magnet that will attract the majority of our stakeholders? So in striving for uniqueness, barulah we lead. Barulah kita ni menjadi anak sulung dan bukan sentiasa menjadi anak bongsu. Faham? Anak sulung will lead. Dia akan memimpin. Anak bongsu 
dipimpin. Orang lain dah buat, baru kita nak join the bandwagon. Ah inilah saya panggil anak bongsu. Jadi sekarang ni motto of this university we lead. Kita perlu menjadi anak sulung in most of the activities that we want to do. But we need big ideas to answer the questions that we just posed. So the next thing is how should USM address the big questions by design? So to do that, kita ada bengkel plan strategik dan pembangunan plan tindakan USM 2018-2020. Sekarang ni nampak tak? Plan strategi kita tak main lah lima tahun. Lima tahun is too long. With disruptive change, we kata tiga tahun kelas. We need to change. If our plan is for five years, we don't have time to change. Orang lain dah dah pergi ke ke bulan kita masih dok buat benda yang sama. So sekarang ni kita kata. Kita akan buat this planning only for three years. All right? We will ask the question. This is the big questions that Tan Sri Tengku Mahalil, our LG board, has posed to us. Where you are today, where you want to go. And because you know where you want to go, then you ask the question, where is the university now? Di peringkat local, national, global. Uh, what areas are we strong? What areas are we weak? Then how do we plan to get there? Because that's what we want to be. So how do we plan to get there? And when should we get there? And what system should be in place if we want to get there? Okay. So to do this, dulu kita caca marba. Sat ada idea baru, sat blueprint, sat a, a new economic model tak tahu mana. So learn kita align. Dengan blueprint dan everything else that the government wants uh, apa, to be done for the country. Senang sikit buat kerja. Kita punya KPI pun senang deliver. So USM strategic plan for 2018 to 2020 will now be aligned to the blueprint. Uh, assure integration of the arts and science. Because sekarang ni, as we go to disruptive change, you now see integration of arts and science very important in order to move forward. It's no longer just about STEM alone. And we need to align to the APEX agenda because that keeps us on our roots. We have to face facts that we must take care of people first. Values must be first. And we'll do it USM style with strategic differentiation, differentiation that will ensure that USM is in the lead. And we must do it in line juga dengan sustainable development goals, all right, to ensure take care of poverty, well-being and all that, all these 17 areas. And it has also to be in line with the Minister of Higher Education, Mandate 2018, Knowledge, Industry, Humanity. So we will try to show you how we are planning to do this. This, in essence, is USM strategic model to be a preferred university. We will study the politics, the economic, the social, the technology, the legal, the environment, the pastel. We will do the SWOT analysis. And after we have done that, which we have done, that's how we come up with the USM big ideas. And that these big ideas must undergo ABC, which is to align to the Malaysian Education Blueprint, A, B is to have a business orientation model. C is to raise the competency of the talent because dulu kita tak tahu mana kita nak halal. Kalau kita dah tahu mana kita nak halal, then now we will make sure that we train the, the lecturers, the, the staff to now be aligned to where we want to go. And D, always, whatever we do, hashtag anak sulung. Where is the strategic differentiation that we want to be? Barulah sekarang. Kita boleh declare kita ada tiga R. To be relevant, to be referred, to be respected, to be a preferred university. We will be sharing with you. Town hall sessions will be done to get your feedback and inputs. All right? So now, I'd like to share with you the strategies that need to be aligned to, be the, to the blueprint. First, for all the students in the hall, let's discuss about Hebat. This is... Hebat students of University Science Malaysia. I say this and I say this over and over again. You are USM and USM is you. How you behave, what you do, your success is USM success. Because, again, you are USM and USM is you. So as an Apex University with Apex trust and values, USM is committed to produce graduates with the right attributes in order to be relevant to the challenges of the 21st century. So, shift one. Dalam blueprint, semua ada stand shift.
but the one that UNESCO, Stanford, Harvard said the best that Malaysian Higher Education Blueprint has, which is different from other blueprints in the world, is Shift 1. The ability to produce holistic, entrepreneurial and balanced graduates and to show evidence of how this is to be done with integrated CGPA. Okay, so H, holistic, entrepreneurial, balanced. This is by the ministry and articulate and thinking graduate is hashtag USM style. Therefore, Hebat. And when you now have Hebat, how do you measure the student have Hebat? If you don't measure, how to monitor? So you have to create this Hebat index. And this Hebat index will include words like altruism, leadership, entrepreneurial, all this B, A, T, semuanya ada kat sini. So you can take your time to look at this. But what's important is that for HEPA and the gang to develop now, execute and measure the HEPA. Hebat index. It's going to be a very difficult thing to do, but it's not impossible to be done. Okay? And the government has already said, if you want to measure a balanced graduate, then you do integrated CGPA. So we have that, but we also have now the Hebat index that can also now be measured. It is intangible, and we will now develop the index to how to measure this. So we can do this separately, mana they nampak the ICGPA and then they nampak the hebat ataupun it can be interspersed onto the spider web. So this is something that we will figure out uh, later this year. Barulah bila kita ada this measurement, you can now say I am USM by design. Barulah sekarang kita boleh menonjolkan pelajar-pelajar kita untuk memenangi anugerah tokoh siswa negara ini yang menyempakan KPI pada Datuk Adnan. Saya ni tunggu lama dah weh bila no, nak dapat lagi ni tokoh siswa negara ni. So therefore Datuk Adnan this will be your year to deliver for us. The next question is what needs to be in place to ensure Hebat graduates? We cannot be talking PM tepi. All this while, PM tepi tau, semua on the side. Hey, all this intangible community engagement, gedebak gedebuk, semua kita buat sebagai koke. Kalau koke, ada budak buat, ada budak tak buat. So we've got to now institutionalize by developing policies and guidelines to make sure now service learning, entrepreneurial skills development and innovation is now integral to the curriculum, right? And to create this global mindset of our students, we're going to expand program to develop students now with global mindset. And our big idea now is to have USM go global, one passport, one student. Semua pelajar USM coming in akan ada pasport sebab sebelum dia graduate, dia mesti keluar to go to another country to learn about the culture of the people. Alright, so it's going to be compulsory. We will start this in apa, badges or in progress for certain programs dahulu before the whole university. So at least one week overseas exposure program as part of the academic and entrepreneurial activity like mobility ke, ataupun apusian mobility ke, ataupun asinet, ataupun IMTGT punya program. So there's a lot that I can share after this. We also want to teach you 21st century skills by changing the way we are teaching the students by providing a better learning experience and learning space for the students to now have uh, learning and innovation skills, digital literacy skills, and career and life skills. And this is where Professor Farhan, KPI for the year, to be able now to introduce flexible and adaptable programs by this university. Another very important one is to do frivo education. Okay, tertanya di hati kecil, what the is frivo education? Short for frivolous education. Frivolous education, Mari University buat frivolous education. This is under the new concept yang launched tadi, micro-credential. You never know what kind of skill you need. Yes, you are a lecturer, but do you know how to change your tires bila tire pancit? Of course not. 
So, frivolous education will allow you to learn how to change. You are the swami. Bila istri decide to go on vacation, do you know how to cook for yourself? Uh -huh. Instead of pergi kedai lah. So, do you know how to do this? Alright. Say you want to be a good coffee maker. You can be a good coffee barista. By now, uh, apa ni, learning how to be a good barista. Ini sebab saya dah tengok coffee prince. So that's why I also, now you need to also learn that. Alright? So these are frivolous education. May not seem important, but you never know. You're going to need it one day. And you can do this without having a degree. You can do it cara lifelong learning. And this is frivolous education. Alright, the next one is to inculcate the APEC sustainability agenda in the Hebat students. This is now so very important because students nowadays tak boleh kalau tak ada handphone. Right? Lecturer pun tak boleh kalau tak ada handphone. Tambah pula student. Okay? This is creating technology addiction. Because among the connected, the more connected you are, the more lonely you become with less and less human interaction. Betul tak? That is a fact now. Can I meet you? Oh, yeah, sure. Let's Skype. Tak mau dah jumpa face to face in the kopi tiam. Okay, so things are changing. So therefore, macam mana kita nak pastikan pelajar-pelajar Apex ni is touching base with humanity. And we ask to do this via community engagement. Because, ladies and gentlemen, it takes a whole village to educate a child. The student doesn't learn everything from the classroom. The student will learn a lot from the outside. This is experiential learning. Okay? This is now the new buzzword. Kita dulu panggil community service. Bakti siswa. Tapi sekarang dah tukar jadi community engagement. Sebab we are not talking about service. We are talking about help giving the fishing rod and not the fish. That is community engagement. Now suddenly, the world is talking about social learning. Sama je. Experiential learning, social learning, uh, community engagement. Sama, right? This now suddenly starts to play center stage. And this we will do for university. The exposure to other religion, culture and various socio-economic environment are essential to nurture broad-mindedness. Pelajar USM, pelajar Apex have got to be broad-minded, thinkers and adaptable. This is very important. Ni bangsa tak boleh adapt, susah. You can only do your way, your style, susah. Because things are changing. As I said, disruptive change is happening very fast. Alright? And more important, the ability to interact and work with others. Because as I said, tomorrow with collaborative economy, trust and trustworthiness must be there. So be Jim, Professor Rahman, TNC, be Jim, Skani, will now pastikan community engagement strive, yeah? will now be the center stage produce students who are not only knowledgeable but with values and also caring dengan heart or cult as they say. So this is very much in line dengan Apex Agenda and the SDG. And I said many times about Apusen. Of course, what the is Apusen? Apusen, bukan Apuchen. Okay. Apusen or Asia Pacific Community Engagement Network and USM's collaborative partners will be the platform to send outbound USM students under the One Passport, One Student Initiative. Lah ni bila saya cakap dengan MPP, semuanya berasa nak nak pergi India. Sebab kita punya Belgaum campus in India. Mati akai, tak tahu nak pergi mana dah. What I'm going to share with you, under Apusen, you can go to 93 institutions in 19 countries around the world. So students, when they go to this one passport, one student or USM going global, bukan pergi well well atau bukan pergi seronok seronok. When you go there, you are undergoing community engagement on a project. Okay? And when this project, when you go out there, this is the time we train you to listen to the needs of the community. Bukan you 
tell makcik pakcik this is the way to do things because you are the clever one because you are the one in the university hello listen this is now talking about community engagement that means you go up there ask makcik pakcik what is it that you want from us then then come back to the classroom work in a multidisciplinary mode engineers medical social science work together to now provide solutions that is needed by the community this is the way you learn to connect the dots between what you learn in the classroom and what is actually now happening on the ground right and only then can you touch base with humanity only then you are not so naive you will now know what exactly kemiskinan problem yang sekarang ni uh, society has but while you are there you are supposed to be thinking graduate and a thinking graduate will also see opportunities that's how you become an entrepreneur when you are there in the community you see what the community wants what the solution you offer may also be that something you can commercialize so it will also create this entrepreneurial mindset out of you and the experience gain will also lead to innovative solutions as i said for wealth creation and enhance the quality of life ladies and gentlemen usm has taken this leadership in social and experiential learning tapi ramai yang masih tak tahu tentang Apusen. Alright, so in Apusen, we have created synergy through partnership. And this is a consortium of Apusen of various universities that believe that universities and community can unite to co-create knowledge and enhance social, economic, health, education, culture, heritage, environment, etc. for the region in the, of the Asia Pacific. Big minds with big hearts. And this Apusen is also the platform for corporate social responsibility, for capacity building of the people in the area by volunteerism, by, by both eh, students and staff, service learning, experiential learning, and also place where you do community-based research. So this is where we combine strength in impactful global engagement to solve local and global issues. Look at all this. Semua countries ni have universities that are members of APUSEN. And APUSEN is such that USM takes the lead. The Vice Chancellor of University Science Malaysia will always chair APUSEN. The Deputy Pengurusi can come from any country, but the chairperson will always be USM. And the members of APUSEN include all the 20 public universities, some of the private universities, and universities from 93, um, 93 institutions from 19 countries around the world. So now, with USM going global, one student, one passport, the student now can choose any of the 93 universities to now do their community engagement. So Apusen has now gone beyond Asia Pacific sebab Germany, Canada, semua dah minat untuk join this aspect called social learning. To the point, ini baru saja kita dapat ni, to the point that UNESCO now recognize USM as the preferred university for community engagement. USM is now going to be the hub for knowledge for change. K4C, bukan KFC. KFC dah jadi uh, lain pula dah. So, knowledge for change. We purposely K4C, yeah? knowledge for change. So, boleh tak kita from now on jangan duk main lah perkataan knowledge transfer. Knowledge. We now talk about knowledge for change. K4C. Yeah, KFC, KFC dah jadi lain. Okay, this is now the consortium for training community-based research. Kalau dalam universiti ni masih ada mereka yang tidak mempercayai betul ke ni? Sebab kita semua ni kan evidence-based, kan? Okay, so now I will share with you the testimony video from Dr. Rajesh Tendon, UNESCO Chair for Community-Based Research and Social Responsibility in Higher Education. Hello, I'm Rajesh Tandon, UNESCO Chair on Community-Based Research and Social Responsibility in Higher Education. My co-chair, Dr. Bird Hall, and I 
have been associated with the great effort that University Science Malaysia has been doing in promoting deeper community engagement not only in Malaysia but beyond. Bud and I were available at the founding meeting of Asia Pacific Community University Engagement that was hosted by USM many years ago in Penang. We would very much like to extend our Knowledge for Change Global Consortium to include Malaysia and hopefully have a hub at USM for training next generation of community-based participatory researchers. Do let us know if it makes some interest to you. Thank you. So, we will then continue to have USM going global with ASINET. That means ASEAN Student Entrepreneurship Network um, is all, will go hand in hand with APUSEN uh, to create now specific focus for student entrepreneurship so that our students is no longer creating business for Malaysia but also creating business and creating networking throughout the 19 countries, right? And this is initiated by MPP USM in 2016 and this year's network conference will be hosted by Universitas Shiaquala. And because we are the lead and because we are going to be the training hub for Cave Knowledge for Change, I think this is time that we create an e-journal for community and industry engagement. Professor Mahpara, uh, Professor. Rahman, this is your job to now create this visibility and branding for community engagement and voluntarism practiced by Malaysian higher education and our partner universities in ASEAN or in the APUSEN network. And I hope that USM will spearhead this venture soon this year. Okay, how do we address the non-traditional students? This is the statistic even Farhan has not seen, that shows statistic daftar ijazah pertama USM from 2008 hingga 2017. What is it saying? Right? We have people, uh, apa ni, yang international jarak jauh dan sebagainya. We find that the international in yellow is no longer expand, apa, the brick and mortar can no longer expand. We find that intake is stabilizing. Overall enrollment also stabilizing. PPJJ, color biru is also stabilizing. So everything that we see is stabilizing. Warga yang color biru, this is regarding postgraduate, Professor Rosman. The locals also stabilizing. Bukan warga, the red, also stabilizing. Overall stabilizing. So the intake of traditional uh, students that come in the UPU or the regular way of coming and staying in the university is now stabilizing. Therefore, that is, kalau inilah cara kita nak income generate, we're not going to make it. Because the numbers is not enough to sustain this university. We got to change. That's why there is a pressing need now for university to create a more inclusive learning environment that would empower and democratize education for the non-traditional learners who will also need to upgrade their knowledge and skills. That's why I asked Encik Muhammad from PSDC to be here because we are ready to now work together. Because now there is a need for us to be able now to upgrade the skills of the workforce from the government and the industry uh, and also include lifelong learners who may or may not want to pursue a degree and above all, Pak Din, to make sure that our alumni is also taken care of. I mean, we've got 100,000 over alumni. I'm sure some of them want also to upgrade their knowledge. Who can they turn to if not their alma mater? So this is now why we need to play this big role to help our alma mater juga. So how now do we provide accessibility to flexible and personalized learning experience that is affordable to all these non-traditional students and lifelong partners? 
other words, I'm asking this question, how can we make higher education work for you? And that's why competency-based online micro-credential now becomes very important, very relevant at the time of disruptive change. Because with the advent of ICT, uh, University of Science Malaysia will now be able to offer flexible lifelong learning opportunity to the non-traditional learners through competency-based online micro-credential program. And you've seen how this is now being done. Uh, it was launched this morning. So this flexible model will now allow the students to pay for the credential and collect badges on the basis of their own. So you break study one hour, you collect badge. You study another hour, you collect badge. So if you don't have the time, you don't have the money, you don't collect any badge. You relax. This is now no longer about students wanting to be here for convocation. These students do not undergo convocation. They will undergo now promotion in their work because they complete their Pongya degree. You understand what I'm trying to say? It's a different ball game now. So these will be students who will now undergo stackable program. Learn as you at your own pace, at your own time, and get a degree if you want to at your own time, or just get enough knowledge for what you want to know about. This is the concept of earn and learn. UPU students yang ada dalam hall ni is learn to earn. Kena belajar dulu baru boleh pergi dapat kerja. But people who are already working, why not we say to them, earn and learn. While you are working, you learn and you dapat upgrade your, your own personal development. So micro-credentials, ladies and gentlemen, will now be the new marketplace for income generation of the university. And we will do this in phases. We will start first with Malaysia's professional educators um, and at all levels for schools and for university. And then we will move immediately now to the corporate and the industry needs uh, and also to the needs of the lifelong learners, mungkin dengan cara frivo education. So non-traditionals can now earn and learn. When we talk about global prominence, no university can go without talking about global prominence for academic and research and innovation. The Malaysian Higher Education Blueprint stresses on a comprehensive internationalization effort to make Malaysia as the international hub to attract 200,000 international students, both undergraduate and postgraduate, by 2020. But the big question is, why would international students bother to come to USM? Why not just go to UPM, UM? UM now rank very high. Why not go to UM? Is the USM magnet strong enough? Why would 10 top universities in China choose to come to USM? So what is our magnetic index? What is the strength of our magnet? What will it take to ensure that our magnetic index is high constantly? Bukan on off, constantly. So we now want to design the Apex Global Magnetic Index for academic and research prominence. So in order to be a global player that is respected, referred and relevant, there is a need to create an apex global magnetic index to monitor as well as assess the status or level of global prominence of our academic research program and other activities offered. Saya tak mau dengar dah dekan-dekan mana kata, oh kita punya program hebat weh, sebab ramai budak nak. Well how do I know that? Is you telling me that? What is the evidence to say that your program truly is fantastic worldwide? So this is where the index again will now be developed to now measure this. So, but in the meantime, while we are trying to create the, the Apex Global Magnetic Index, we are already creating global centers. Global centers with our life uh, long term partners life long to swami uh, long term partner okay osaka university have already declared usm as its apa ni, uh, global campus global campus osaka usm ni all right so basically once they declare usm after 12 years of being together together they kata usm i give you the status of osaka university global campus Right? Meaning to say, pelajar-pelajar USM can now go to Osaka. Dapat scholarship lagi untuk pergi Osaka. Because they consider pelajar USM sama macam pelajar Osaka. 
Then we have our long-term relationship with RICAN. 22 years of research collaboration with RICAN to the point RICAN never left Japan except for two universities. One in USM at INFORM and another one at University of Malaya. So RICAN has also offered 10 PhD posts and unlimited number of visits by staff or students for short stints at RICAN in order to do research with RICAN, state-of-the-art research with RICAN. Then we have just a visit by Université de Laurent, which is from France, the dual 19 years this year and going to be the 20th year next year, celebrating our 50th year anniversary, we also discussed and agreed to form now the Global Center USMUL. Okay, so we have got all this magnet that we have, so this will now be included in the Apex Global Magnetic Index to serve as an indicator for USM to gauge her global prominence efforts. And to that, Professor Farhan and Professor MJ will now be involved together, together to form this Apex Indicator together with Professor Rahman. And somewhere along the line, Datuk Nan, tak nak kerja, tak boleh nambah lagi deh. Okay, sambah lagi. Okay. And with the theme, Innovation for Inclusive Development, research activities within USM in 2018 will now undergo rebranding. We cannot be doing research the way, tak apa. We have to have research with impact. And we now have to go rebranding that will allow integration of sustainable development into all of the research activities at USM. So as an RU, Research University, we are also into fundamentals and frontier research, but with an end game of inclusive development for humanity, high tech, high touch. Research using technologies laid out in Industry 4.0 will definitely be part of what we work with, high tech, but for humanity, high touch. Various strategies and action plans will be rolled out in 2018 to adopt working with the quadruple helix at the early stage, no longer working with the industry or working with the community at the later stage of the research. Semua research about community baru nak pergi dekat industry ataupun uh, dekat community. No more. When we do research, uh, we will include the community industry at T0 when we are designing the research program itself so that we get the right value proposition to create the most impact. We will undergo demand-driven research, Professor Rahman will be emphasized, and USM will undergo this time proactive engagement with the industry. No more waiting for the industry to come to us. Hello, we have to change. We now need to be proactively going to the industry. Would you like to work with me? Research for industrial solutions will also now be undertaken. Industry academia relationship will be strengthened now with the completion of University Innovation Incubator at Science at USM. So sekali lagi bila nak pergi area tu, jangan tengok dewan tu untuk menikah saja. Sebelah tu is I square U. This is a double tower building, I square U. For members of the industry, this is another new place, not just science at USM. This is I square U. This is another place uh, with large facilities for you to open up your labs or uh, whatever research or even your office at the I square U. And this is where you will interact also with members of the university because all will be in one house. This is our example of academia industry as one. All this doesn't matter anymore unless you show an impact. And this is where community-based translational research, USM at Johor, now comes into play. USM at Johor, man mana Johor ni? Negeri Sembilan, hello, Negeri Sembilan, Johor. Okay. This is community-based science research laboratory. Tak pernah lagi universiti yang diberi opportunity sedemikian. Selalunya bila kita nak buat knowledge transfer, kita kena usaha pergi cari kampung mana ke untuk for us to now transfer the knowledge of the R&D that we have developed. But now terbalik kot. Right? Yang teramat mulia Datuk Johan Pahlawan Lela Perkasa Setiawan Datuk Muhammad Abdullah 
in May 2017 came to see us at USM because uh, apa ni yang mulia undang luar Johor kata walaupun dia di negeri sembilan walaupun ada usim di sana dia prefer to work with USM USM at Johor will become a showcase area for USM community-based research initiative that is also university-led growth of the area and will facilitate knowledge transfer for knowledge for change to enhance socio-economic development in Johor. Ladies and gentlemen, 50 acres of land in Johor is given to University Science Malaysia to now undergo translational research kita to help the people in Johor. So we have presented led by Dato MJ to undergo first concept of precision farming, right? Dengan menggunakan IoT. Nah tak main lah tumbuh-tumbuh agriculture biasa ni. Kita kan industry 4.0. So precision farming, ecotourism and distance learning because kita nak meningkatkan capacity building of anak-anak di Johor. Tertanya di hati kecil, kenapa Johor? Sebab Johor is the place of the first vice chancellor of vice chancellor? Yes, of University Science Malaysia. So that's why sebagai anak Johor and that is why sekarang ni Johor came all the world Cross many states to come to Penang and work with University Science Malaysia. We talk about financial sustainability. Finance is one important component for USM to stay competitive and alive. So financial strategy is now there for long-term financial sustainability, for sufficient investment in order for us to now be able to move this university so that we continue to excel in research and as well as education. And we're going to do this by restructuring university business for cost rationalization and income generation activity. We have done all these strategies in 2017. Termasuk uh, private wing, termasuk endowment, tapi this year kita nak wakaf dan juga endowment to move even higher and last year for information everybody worked so hard our target was 380 million but we made 256 million not bad 2018 kalau dah boleh dapat 256 million what is the problem of getting 280 million for 2018. So for 2018, Bendahari dah kata kita akan maintain the 2017 strategies but with improvement on delivery system. So therefore, heads of department, white envelope will still be delivered to your door. Okay. And by June, kita dah menerima mandat all IPTA must move towards being a smart campus order from the ministry, right? So, we just now launch our digital payment towards cashless campus under US U Smart Pay. Actually, it's USM Smart. Nampak tak cara tulis tu? So, as I said, we will start in phases. Sebab, I can, I can, I believe, imagine suami saya sendiri je, right? Nak bayar RM5 aja nak bawa keluar handphone, nak kena scan QR, nak kena scan. Silap saya bulan macam uh, Tan Sri Jaga kata, silap saya bulan RM5 jadi RM5,000. Kan? Sebab mata tak nampak, tekan-tekan zero terlebih. Okay, but basically, semua yang old school ni, semacam Profesor Azazi. Kepala pintar tapi telefonnya enggak. Okay, so this is another thing that we are apa ni, we need to worry about lah. Because of that, I said to Bendahari, kita tidak boleh buat worldwide, I mean, USM wide. Kita kena buat slow and steady. The students yang dah smart merata ni, they can handle it. But the ones yang belum smart merata lagi will do this in phases. Ha, sebab tu, tapi semua orang nak pasal QR code ni tak berapa reti. Tapi semua orang sekarang ni rasanya even yang dah senior pun dah faham touch and go. 
Cut touch and go ni amat penting So sekarang ni kita boleh guna touch and go jugalah uh, So to to do all this But we'll do this in phases Yang QR code tu kita akan buat dulu Di um, library dengan sport center And the first student entrepreneurship That will undergo this Will be uni storage yeah? And uh, but the rest we can also have top up So kat sana lagi kat luar ni ada booth You can do, if you have touch and go Tak payah pergi jauh-jauh Boleh top up terus dengan benda hari Dekat booth sini sahaja Dan from now on Touch and go is all, we are also the agent for touch and go So you can also buy Hanya di USM, tak payah line up So the 50 years jubilee card Remember, October 4 2019 USM akan celebrate our 50th anniversary 50th and 50 tahun dah umur USM nya bukan tahun ni tahun depan tapi kita nak prime all of you so sekarang ni this 50 years jubilee card will be available by next week jadi semua orang takkan dapat betul ke Datuk K semua orang takkan dapat lagi tapi by next week insyaallah semua orang boleh beli dah this card you can use this as the touch and go card Dr. Cairo, remember, lawyers can be replaced by robots. So, in order to be relevant, our governance have got to be agile. There are many things that can be done and many more that cannot be done since we do not have full autonomy. Right, but even within the things that we that can be done, there's still a lot to be done. So maybe we should explore that first. But with the advent of disruptive changes, there is a need for agile university governance. Tak boleh buat dah cara lama. This is the way the university does things. Kita kena tengok sekarang ni dengan klien kita, member of the industry, how are they now going to... At the end of the day, we need to be able to work with the industry. Kadang-kadang lecturer dah ready, industry dah ready. Tapi governor, you know, masa nak sign MOA ni tak boleh buat. Tang situ kita ada problem. So, for CRES, for others, remember, we will make the difference now. We will now move for agile uh, governance in order to make sure now things are going to uh, allow university industry to collaborate because USM governance will now harmonize, mediate and find solution. All right. So inshallah, uh, we will now move in this direction. Innovation ecosystem, makers at USM and the development of makerpreneurs. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot talk about innovation economy if we do not make innovation as part of our life. And this, uh, by having this makers platform, we now train students and staff exposed to problem-solving challenges, build communication skills, learn to work with others, and actually now build something that is the innovation and then showcase what they have built by pitching now to the industry or to the venture caps. So the concept of innovation can now lead to immediate spin-off companies. So while we have students who are makers, I ask now the deans, bring the problem to the classroom. Do not underestimate our students. Macam tadi, USM Fit, kalau dengan apps yang kita ada, yang tadi cashless dengan apps, yang, apa lagi yang kita nak buat in the future? Why can't we bring that problem to the classroom? We ask the students to sama-sama design. All this and we listen to the best ideas and the best ideas is what we will adopt because if we don't believe in our students, who do we believe in? Because we are the one who teach them. So bottom line, I say now, bring the problem to the classroom. Barilah kita sama-sama menyelesaikan masalah. Baru kita boleh dapat buy in. And the, 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 when I say problem to the classroom, I also mean bring the problem to the staff. Why not kita sama-sama innovate and create? So University Science Malaysia now takes the lead among all IPTA and has spearheaded makers movement since 2017 where Professor Rosni started it, backed by MCMC. Now we use think, model and make. Okay? So USM promotes this now, not only to the universities but also to high school students via Young Makers Program organized by Science at USM with our partners Academy Science Malaysia as well as MCMC. 
So the next step now, no more PM tepi. We will now continue to make makers now as part of our coke and doubling all the maker zone built up and kickstart the first maker service for the bottom billion community together with the USM staff. So in short, Professor Hanafi, Pengarah Inovasi, and also Dato MJ, saya dah put everything together in what creates innovation, especially for the Anugrah uh, MEA. Right? Sebenarnya, USM ni buat benda in silo-silo. Actually, when I start to do this, baru kita nampak sebenarnya is a whole big picture of how we are training the students towards innovation. We have ASINET melalui HEPA dan APUSEN. We have maker pronios that will create the innovation. We have lecturers that is doing R&D for commercialization. We have people under APUSEN concept that is doing knowledge for change and knowledge transfer. We have EPIC, the entrepreneurial center, which is also training the students to be a business person and having entrepreneurial partnership. We have lecturers that have staff that can do blockbusters. We have that. And we have USM at Johor and also other community where we do translational. So there are many innovative ways that we are now doing in USM. So I'm almost coming to the end. Ladies and gentlemen, USM has got to be the trusted brand. We need to, in order to make sure we are the trusted brand, we can no longer be doing things the way we are doing now. We need to set up an intelligence unit that will ensure USM is relevant today as well as provide foresight for the future. Tak boleh dah teka-teka. We need now with data and also data driven to make sure now that where we're heading, which academic program, which uh, research should we now be doing. This now must be done by the intelligence unit. What we lack in most public university is a whole unit that concentrate on marketing. Marketing cannot be just anybody doing marketing. Marketing of the USM brand now must be strengthened to build a positive image of USM via mainstream media, new media, media relations. Tak boleh dah main dengan newspaper. Ramai orang tak baca dah newspaper. Dia baca blog. Dia baca social media. That is now where we need to hit to create a strong buzz about USM's program activity. Tak boleh sekali-sekala. Every day that feed must now go in and enhance the number of followers now in social media. Pak Din, where are you? This is our perhubungan alumni, also our alumni. So we need now to engage our alumni for networking. Bring back the alumni who have success stories for career coaching and be the role model for the students and help give back to their alma mater and also to society. Satu lagi, MPRC. Crisis management must be handled swiftly and professionally. Tak boleh dibiarkan. Apa yang berlaku? Immediately. Shut it down professionally. We need to address that. And above all, dengan all this planning, etc., etc., efficient and effective delivery system has got to take place. Otherwise, semua ni berkecai. So we need to have all these things now in place because to be the preferred university that is number one in the hearts and minds of the people and especially to alumni, this is something that we need to do. A healthy community is a happy community. That's why we now want to have USM Fit, bukan USM Feed. Takut you all tersilap. Okay? So, USM Fit is therefore the initiative to support the call by government to increase the health status among Malaysia and to put a strict control over obesity. Then it begins here in this university as well. This is also an R&D program. The apps yang Dr. Norihan cerita tadi ini will be among the first because this what it means here that bila kita ambil semua you all punya data for all the staff and students of USM, serentak as of 1st of March, kita akan ada 41,000 data. 41,000, 31,000 pelajar, 10,000 staff. 
That makes 41,000 data. Every week kita akan upgrade as we upgrade on our uh, smartphone. The wait, semua now is going into a repository. All this will undergo data analytics. Only then can we now predict how much money we have to take care for your medical bill, how much money we have to do this, we have to do that. We can now do a lot of prediction and you pensyarah-pensyarah for quality of life and qualitative research can now do a lot of things with this data. This is the first time we're going to have all this data now for us to do further research and predict the movement of this university by design. Okay, so huh, we will also have a health competition. As of today, makanlah banyak-banyak, tetapi hari ini, the food that is served outside has been calculated 450 calories. Okay, 450 calories because most of you who are sitting in the hall most of the time or the meeting, meeting, meeting seperti saya cannot afford to take more than 1,600 calories per day. Sekali roti canai habis. So therefore, we will have a health competition and we will tell you what are the incentive that we will now give for those who have met the certain weight loss that is there. Of course, there will be now per campus, per PTJ. For the PTJ, all this is now aligned to your KPI performance. Yeah, engkau, bukan kau seorang. The whole PTJ and the staff and the student and the academic staff in that PTJ has got to lose weight or you're not going to get your KPI punya performance. It's part and parcel of the KPI. Barulah we tak cakap pasal PM tepi. Okay, so we will start to do this because I have another hidden agenda. Kita ni lama tak bersuar muka. Kita tak ada human-human interaction. So, bila kita bersama-sama do exercise, baru kita kenal dia siapa. Baru kita ada siratur rahim, tak Ustaz? Hmm, kau. So, barulah kita boleh together-gather. Tidak macam mana kita a lot of misunderstanding, miscommunication. And plus, sekarang kita ada competition antara kampus juga. Supaya kita nak tengok kehebatan pengarah-pengarah kampus kita untuk membawa PTJ-PTJ bersama-sama yeah, in order to handle any situation for the campus. So, the more siratul rahim tu ada, the better and happier is the family. So, we want to have a culturation of a healthy living. That's why I said to Norihan, kalau cakap kat mereka, lose weight, tak guna. They don't know what they're eating. They don't know whether what they're eating is good or not. So we will have to you program upon program to acculturate. The whole idea is for you to lose weight so that you are fit. Bukan saya kurus saja-saja so that kurus but you are fit. So this is the time lecturers get to know the students, students get to know lecturers etc etc. And we hope that this personalised healthcare will now be emphasised with the data and this USM fit will start in March 1. Amboy, 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 amboy. Look at the happiness index for tahun 2017. 3,555 staff bercuti luar negara, you. <laughs> Siapa kata USM miskin? Definitely not. And the top five negara yang paling digemari untuk bercuti, number one is Saudi Arabia. Alhamdulillah, pergi Mekah dengan Umrah. Okay. Kedua, Indonesia. Ketiga, ke mana ya? Thailand, Sawadika. Okay. Keempat, Australia. Kelima, United Kingdom. Ini mesti pergi London. Ya. Alright. And then there is negara-negara lain. Seperti, percuti di Vienna, Profesor Nazla. Atau... Balik India, Datuk K. Atau bermain salji di Switzerland, PUU. So you can see that kita ni semua banyak travel ni. 3,555 bercuti di luar negara. Tak main cuti-cuti dalam negeri. Except for saya dan suami je lah. Kami pergi overseas balik kota baru je Okay, for gender prihatin, a gender initiative to look into the welfare of working mothers in USM. 
through the establishment of a lactation room for mothers to breastfeed or for pumping breast milk for storage. Each PTJ will be providing a small area for the purpose following the international standards. International standards, tak main bagi cerok-cerok na, so mothers buat pam dia punya milk ya. So please consult Kanita for further advice and standards. USM Green, as Malaysia is progressing towards becoming a developed nation, there is a huge amount of resources required to fuel, fuel the development, which includes highly skilled talent, energy, water, food, etc. So USM will also take this initiative as part of our APEX agenda to showcase how a community of 40,000 odd people can now live in a sustainable lifestyle through green initiative practices by lowering the carbon footprint of the USM people. So we will reduce the usage of water, energy through efficient usage and there are many efforts now to reduce electricity etc. Uh, dengan cara yang lebih baik dengan LED dan sebagainya. So we will promote green lifestyle that we minimize the use of energy and water like walking up the stairs instead of taking the lift. And we will implement research findings that can now move to replace the conventional energy with renewables. So, let me recapitulate before I end some of the strategic differentiation, the big ideas that we now have to move 20 USM in 2018 to be a preferred university. We will produce Hebat students, we will create curriculum that is integrated with experiential learning, no more PM tepi. We will do social learning via APUSEN, melalui K4C, Knowledge for Change. We will undergo USM going global with one passport, one student. We will undergo earn and learn via micro-credentials for personal professional development of the non-traditional students. We will move for freebo education and translational research to the Johor community. Ladies and gentlemen, to be the preferred university, we have to be unique and we have to become a strong magnet to attract our stakeholders, not some of the time, but all of the time. And we need to do this by design. Barulah kita sekarang in line with the motto we lead. So ladies and gentlemen, I end with the mantra of the year. USM akan usaha menjadi anak sulung untuk memimpin dan bukan anak bongsu untuk dipimpin. Hashtag sulung selalu. Inshallah, together we will do it hashtag USM style. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. And I look forward for a great 2018. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Yang Berbahagia, Datuk. Tuan-tuan dan puan-puan, berikan tepukan yang paling gemuruh kepada Yang Berbahagia, Profesor Datuk Dr. Asma Ismail, Naib Chancellor, University of Science Malaysia. Diharapkan dengan penyampaian perutusan itu, kita semua dapat memahami intipatinya untuk diaplikasikan dalam mempertasakan kemajuan universiti Sains Malaysia yang tercinta untuk masa hadapan yang lebih baik.